اهلا وسهلا اليوم راح اشرح او راح اقرا معاكم السلايدات تبعت ليكشر 10 عن الالكتريك كيرف كريبتوغرافي سو بيفور وي ستديد كريبتوغرافي ذات از بيست اون تي ال بي بروبلمز اند فاكتورايزيشن بروبلمز اللي هم بنسميهم التراب دور فانكشنز ف In this lecture, we focus on elliptic curve cryptography. Um, so, like I said before, we studied about Tefi Hellman, RSA, El Jamal, or El Jamal, FDH, RSA, DSA. Okay. So, uh, generally. We use a symmetric key cryptography for encryption, but we use uh, for key exchange we use public key encryption. We will see why later. Okay, so this is about the last lecture. Um, And this lecture is about uh, elliptic curves, the mathematics part, and then the cryptography part of elliptic curve, uh, of elliptic curve cryptography. And then we will take some applications that are used now or commonly used elliptic curves. So we will learn about uh, why RSA, why ECC is better than RSA and Diffie-Hellman and how to choose the correct elliptic curve and some popular uh, applications. So uh, an elliptic curve is just a curve, just a curve and it's defined by y square equal to x cubed plus ax plus b so the a can be changed and the b can be changed and this is the this type of elliptic curve is the wire strass curves um, or form and it's the most yeah. okay so this example is when a equal minus one and b equal positive one so this is what we get So here are different uh, values of a, like for example here a equals 0, here also a equals 0, but here b equals minus 1, and here b equals positive 1. Okay, so here um, a equals negative 3, and b equals positive 3, so it takes this shape, and here b is 0 and here b is 0 and here a is negative 4 and a is negative 4 okay so some curves are disjoint why the reason is because actually um, this is a y square function and um, usually uh, when we want to find y so this is the y axis and these are the values of x, right? So if we want to find y, we're going to square uh, square root both sides. And if the root is undefined, like if this is if this turns out to be negative when x is between um, 0 and 2, so if we substitute 0 minus 4 times 0, which is zero okay uh, let's say like one one minus four it's a negative value right so how can we take the square root of a negative value this is why it's undefined and around one it's undefined so all these points undefined similarly here so and uh, why is it symmetric about the x-axis well because Usually, if we square 3, we get 9, 
but also if we square negative 3 we also get 9 so the square root of 9 is either positive or negative 3 okay so this is why we have a positive and negative y so if okay Okay, so this is one of the examples when a equals to 0 and b equals to 7. And this is called SecP256K1. And it's used by Bitcoin. Okay. And this, so this is the wire stress. This, however, is the Montgomery curves. Another type of elliptic curve. And it's defined by b is here coefficient to the y square and the a is coefficient to the x square then we have an x okay and um, so fractions are allowed but uh, in cryptography we always use discrete values i mean integers because we like discrete values so um this is an example of a montgomery curve uh, it's used by the open SSH and uh, it's here uh, B equals 1 and A equals to four, 486,662 and it's called curve 25519 Edward curves is another um, uh, Hi Nijai. An example. Okay, our issue is defined by a x square plus y x square equal one plus d x square y square. And we have x square in the the and it has a coefficient of a, and we have a coefficient of d. Uh, in the left hand side, in the right hand side, uh, dx square y square. Um, oh, to be accurate, this is the equation of the twisted Edward curves. Uh, it is generalized and it's a commonly used curve in cryptography. So, this is what it looks like when um, a is 10 and d is 6. One example is curve 448 and it's used in the digital signature scheme uh, at DSA. So A is uh, 1 and D is 39,081. Then we have, um, so if we use the digital signature scheme at DSA and we use the curve 448 together, it's called ed448 again if we use curve 2251 with ed dsa it is ed25519 so now we're gonna talk about cryptography so i explained what the trapdoor function is it is uh, one that like we can easily find the the number but we, it's very very hard to solve it and it's easy to encrypt but hard to decrypt okay so it's hard in one way and easy in the other way um, PKC is all about finding a good trapdoor function so RSA has been a choice because um, it's good but the keys are large Okay, we will see this later. And because we're uh, the quantum computers are approaching and they are becoming better and better at solving math problems. Um, so uh, the reason it was introduced is because because of this, because of this, ECC is introduced in 1985, but it uh, by Neil and Victor. But it was not standardized un un until OpenSSL added 
it in 2000 and OpenSSH added it in 2011. And then it is used for key exchange, digital signature and encryption. But we will see why we don't use it for encryption. We always use symmetric key cryptography for encryption. It's more powerful and efficient, uh, it's, but it's more complex. Okay. So, how does it work? The, the problem is that um, adding points on an elliptic curve over a finite field. Recall, RSA operates over integers and Diffie-Hellman and Elkanad operate over the multiplicative cyclic group Z, Z sub P. Okay. But in ECC, we're dealing with an elliptic curve. So this, this is uh, what we used before. So we define the field and uh, a field is defined over posit uh, addition and multiplication and it is uh, has an identity and for each uh, operation and it has an inverse for each operation <coughs> and it's finite so we will define the elliptic curve um, uh, we first define a finite field then uh, we choose the inverse to be the image about the x-axis because we said that it is a, a you know y square so there's an image about the y-axis then addition is defined by p plus q plus r equals zero for any three aligned non-zero points and we have a um, distributivity and commutativity and uh, then we will have the identity the identity is denoted by big O and big O is point at infinity how do we add two points in an elliptic curve so if we have P and Q then uh, as per definition when we add we need to draw a line and then we have the third point R. Okay. The third point is the third intersection. We always have three intersection points. And uh, um, this is R. So what did we define before? We defined that P plus Q plus R equals zero. Thus, P plus Q must equal, and yani we want to add P plus Q, right? It must be negative R, which is the inverse of R. Why? As per definition, which is P plus Q plus R equals zero for any three aligned points. And since we draw a line, then they are aligned. So here we want to add p to itself so when we want to add a point to itself we can just draw any random line because we have infinite possibilities then we can define um, uh, and uh, we can find this point and take the inverse wait okay so we we're gonna find this and the inverse will be p plus p equals 2p okay so uh, how about 3p if we want to find 3p we add 2p 2p then we will have 3p get the idea so this is just a definition of how we add in the field that we defined so like i said we draw a line between p and 2p <coughs> which we found earlier then we will find the third intersection point and we'll take the inverse of this point then we will have the uh, addition result so okay here um, 
we we want to de uh, define something that since we have this point is 2p we will just add 2p to p right but how about adding 2p to itself isn't it faster to get to 4p i mean if you want to find 4p we we don't need to find 3p then find 4p no we can just add 2p to itself then we will have 4p so it's a faster way of addition uh, like for example if we add p to itself we will have 2p then we know the point 2p right then we can just add 2p to itself to get 4p and then add 4p to itself to get 8p so it is faster because we don't need to define the points 3p 5p we just skip and add to itself so now we have 8p the point in the curve we also have the point 2p in the curve then we can find 10p by adding them together it is much better than adding p plus p plus p plus uh, 10 times so we reduce nine steps to four okay so if if you know you know how um if you add a number to its inverse you always get the identity right so if in the real numbers uh, you add one and the inverse of one which is negative one you get zero which is the identity the identity of the addition in likewise in, in the elliptic curves if we add p to the inverse of it of p which is q because if this line is exactly straight then it will intersect p and the inverse of p because we we define the inverse to be the image about the x-axis okay so if we add them together we must obtain the o big o which is the point at infinity uh, so when we want to uh, use it, it in cryptography we want to uh, so how how are, how are we going to use elliptic curve uh, into into cryptography so we define this problem which is um, we we have a point p we يعني نتفق على point p Alice and Bob uh, uh, agree on p okay so k is a secret uh, value then p kp gives us x and find k this is the problem this is the problem that the adversary must uh, try to find dlp for the group of points on an elliptic curve over a finite field rather than the multiplicative cyclic group set p okay <clears throat> the reason why they call it elliptic curve discrete log problem is because uh, the only difference is that here we're gonna find k and it's very similar to the discrete log problem so here it just tells us that it's very hard to find k because usually p is a large number and uh, adding p to itself k times will result in k in x whose coordinates are too large and to make it smaller actually we can just hash uh, or we can use the modulus actually we don't hash we can use the modulus because we always use the modulus in in cryptography so here we we use this equation which is the wire wire stress elliptic curve and uh, we multiply it by modulus of p which will uh, cut cut the maximum value uh, to be less than p and p is a prime number okay so uh, this is actually 
what it looks like in cryptography but the reason why it doesn't look the same as before is because we use the mod modulus p so it's different okay so you want to add p to q and um, simply what we do is uh, this line intersects to q and it will keep keep uh, keep uh, Keep playing until it intersects a third point, R. So it will keep repeating because, you know, when we have a discrete um, curve, unlike the real curve that it must intersect a third point, in, in discrete world, it's not guaranteed that we will intersect. This is why the line will keep repeating until it reach to intersect a line. Okay, so why is uh, it better than RSA and DLP algorithms? Because in elliptic curve, we only need uh, to, to obtain a 112-bit security. We just multiply the number of bits. But in RSA, it's like 10 times or something. However, in symmetric key, it is the same. Why? Because in symmetric key cryptography, the key is random. But uh, in uh, elliptic and RSA, it's uh, about a math problem, so it's not really random. To, okay, so um, first of all, um, to get into action, uh, first we need to pick a number P, which is the prime number that we use in the modulus. And we pick a curve which should be a secure curve and we pick a point at the curve which is big p and we agree on this point alice and bob and we pick a random number k which is secret secret key and we calculate x equals to kp and uh, x is what the adversary needs to solve how did we get to x we he has p but how did he get to x so what's public is the big P, the big X, and small p. But K is not. The reason why it's hard to find K because there's infinite number of ways to obtain to X. I mean, just imagine how, how uh, complex the addition is in the elliptic curve. So... Now we want to see how a uh, key exchange in elliptic curve algorithm happens. So we will study elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman and then in digital signatures we have elliptic curve DSA and we have Edward DSA and for encryption we have the encryption, uh, elliptic curve IES integrated encryption scheme. So we only use it for uh, key exchange and digital signatures. So first of all, Alice will generate a secret key, KA, and um, it will be a secret uh, number, random, and it will generate the public key from the secret key, which is K. And um, the public key will simply be big A. So big A is the big X, which equal to KP. And K is the secret value. Then uh, Bob will do the exact same. Then what will they do? They will exchange their public keys, okay? So she will send him A and he will send her B. Uh, then how will they uh, obtain the key? Key pair, KAB equals to her secret key, the uh, Alice's secret key, multiplied by Bob's public key. Vice versa for Bob. 
So why does this work? Because S, uh, the secret key multiplied the, by the public key as K, K, B, K, A, P. And the secret key of Alice multiplied by the public key of Bob is K, A, K, B, P, which is just the same. It's just uh, the order is different. So in ECDSA, first we do the key generation. Uh, okay, now we finished the. Okay. We finished the Diffie Hellman key exchange. Now for the digital signature. Uh, so it's the same steps. We have the generation of uh, public key using KP. But this is for digital signature. They're not going to share uh, the same as before. The steps are as follows. First, uh, Alice would calculate the hash of the message that she wants to send to Bob. Then, uh, she wants to sign it. She wants to sign the message. So, she calculates the signature. Uh, the signature is R and S. So big R is a random X value uh, from Alice, modulus P, and big S is K inverse hash. It's her K inverse hash of M plus R multiplied by her secret key, mod modulus P. Okay, then she will send uh, Bob the message and the signature. Then Bob wants to verify that this message is really, really, truly verify, uh, signed by Alice. How will he know this? So he will use his given values, which is the hash of the message, the message, and Alice's public key, and the signature. First of all, he will calculate u sub 1, u sub 2, and t. So u sub 1 is the inverse of big S from the signature, multiplied by the hash of m. And u2 is s, sub, uh, s inverse, multiplied by r, modulus p. Then t equals to u1, u1 p plus u2 a so how okay where t is a point with the coordinates x sub t and y sub t okay we will see how this works how t can actually verify the value of t can determine okay how uh, it is valid the signature is valid if r equals to the x coordinate of the value t modulus p and the x coordinate of a the public key of alice equals the x coordinate of t the one he calculated If, if this is true, if yani, he can verify that x of t is x sub t equals to uh, uh, the a, uh, the x coordinate of a, then, okay, let's just see how this happens. Okay, so um, we have the first equation, which is the public key of Alice equals to kp, and t equals to u sub 1 p, plus u sub 2 a okay and s equals to k inverse hash of the message and plus r multiplied by k multiplied by k so we will see what t equals so u sub 1 equals to s inverse hash of m so, so we will substitute s inverse and hash of m then p 
plus S inverse R, so S inverse R multiplied by A. Okay, then we will take out S inverse uh, as a common factor. Then we'll, we will uh, substitute A equals to KP, right? Then we will have hash of N multiplied by P plus R K P. So we will take out P as a common factor in the right hand side. Finally, we will simplify equation 3. Here we have equation 3. So equation 3 is the value of S. Okay, so what will we do? We will multiply both sides by S inverse. So here we multiply by S inverse and here we will have 1. Then, so we divide by S, which is S inverse. And uh, then we multiply by K. So we will have, um, uh, we will multiply by K. So here K inverse will disappear and we will have K here. Okay. Uh, step four in equation two, from step two, this one, use K as calculated in step three. So we substitute K with this. Okay, so S inverse is inside of K, S inverse hash of N uh, plus R. So, okay, so if we substitute K inside here, we will obtain KP. Um, so we want to, if this whole, this means that who, one who created S and R knows the value K, which should only be Alice. Um, okay, so kp equals to u1 p plus u2 a of course kp is alice's public key which is a so, so from r and s uh, he should be able bob should be able to regenerate alice's public key which is kp okay so this is a this is Alice's public key. And how did he find Alice's public key? By using the val the equation T. Okay. Okay, we finished the digital signature. So now we will use uh, the other type of digital signature, which is add DSA. And um, uh, unlike ECDSA, which we finished, it's based on El Gamal. Ed DSA is based on Schnorr signature scheme. Uh, the most popular variant is one that uses SHA-2 and one that uses SHA-3. So we have Ed25519 and Ed448, which is more recent. Uh, so Ed DSA is generally simpler, more secure, faster, newer so it still hasn't been studied well so how does it work it's the same exact steps we generate k then we find uh, s in this case we find s is just the hash of k so instead of the, using k the secret key we just use s this, the hash of the secret key just to make it more random and shorter then it will do the same step. It will find the public key A. Then she will obtain the signature. The signature goes in the steps. First, she calculates S. Then she calculates the hash of S and M, which is R. 
So first she finds S, then she finds R. R is the hash of S and M. So big R uses small r, multiply by P, and big S uses R plus H, multiplied by S, and H is hash of R and A, the public key, and M. So then she sends Bob what the same exact thing, A, M, and the signature. Then Bob wants to verify the signature, so he will take his given values. Then he will calculate H, which is the hash of R, A, and M. Then, simply, if S multiplied by P equals to big R plus H, A, it's valid. So, how does this work? Because uh, we, we, we can verify that S multiplied by P equals to R plus H multiplied by A. How, how does this happen? Because this recall these equations that Alice used. Big S is R plus H multiplied by S. So R plus H multiplied by S multiplied by P. So R multiplied by P and H multiplied by S multiplied by P. So now we distribute. Then R P is also big R and SP is also big A, then we are left with H. Now we will uh, study the encryption, uh, which is EC uh, integrated encryption scheme. Uh, first of all, the key generation, which is similar to before so she gen he generates sk and then finds pk then sends to alice then alice will find the random uh, value r then she will calculate the signature uh, actually not the signature the big r First, she generates a random small r, then she finds the big r, which is rp, and they already agree on p previously. Then she will find s, which is r multiplied by the public key of bob. Then Alice encrypts the message with m, with s, using symmetric cipher. So she will use some symmetric cryptography and encrypt S with M. And S is R multiplied by P, K. And only Bob can decrypt this. So Alice uses a key derivation function to generate symmetric key based on S. Um, so we finish this, this, this. Now she sends Bob the encryption, which is C, and she sends him big R. And big R contains the small r multiplied by P. And he already knows P. So he will receive... Uh, Bob recovers S from his secret key and R. So S equals the secret key multiplied by R because the secret key is KB multiplied by R and multiplied by big P, which is, uh, so KB is just the public key of um, Bob, which is the same way Alice generated 
S. So S is R multiplied by PKB. So he he will find the S value from from the R. So he only receives R, so he can find S. Then he will decrypt using the symmetric key and the cipher. Okay, this one is not important. So this one says why, uh, how the key length compared to each RSA and elliptic curve. 